Hey guys, welcome back to Now I Know. Today let's see difference between genome, chromosome, gene and DNA. Now these terms, even though we use it very frequently, I have seen students getting confused between them. Even when I was studying in my plus two, I used to get really confused between chromosome and DNA especially. So today in this video, we are going to clear all our doubts regarding these terms. So let's begin. Alright, so we'll start with DNA because all of us will know the basic structure of DNA. It's a double helix structure. It has a sugar phosphate backbone in it and it is made up of four nucleotides, adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine. Adenine pairs with thymine, guanine pairs with cytosine. Alright, now one important point that uh, we should know here is when you take one eukaryotic cell, now we are talking everything in terms of human, okay? So when you take DNA from one nucleus, one cell, the nuclear DNA would be around 2 meters long. Now we have talked about this in DNA packaging video. I'll put the link on the screen in case you want to see that this huge amount of DNA needs to be fit inside tiny nucleus, maybe around 5 to 10 micron in size. So it has to undergo packaging strategy and we have seen how the nucleosome is formed and how it is arranged in chromosome. Okay, but still keep this point you know this 2 meter long DNA just spin it over here we'll come back to this this is very important to understand so DNA is double helix has sugar phosphate backbone and made up of four nucleotides so this is simple to understand we have done with DNA we are clear about DNA alright now after DNA comes genes I'm going in a flow okay that will become easy to understand now as I just said the DNA in our nucleus would be around 2 meters long. So this long DNA, in this long DNA, the segment or chunk of DNA, that means when you say segment or chunk of DNA, now we know it is made up of what? Nucleotides, A, T, G, C, all different combination will be there. In that one specific sequence of nucleotide, maybe some hundred base pairs long that specific nucleotide sequence that chunk of DNA is called gene okay there are specific nucleotide sequence or segments or chunks of DNA which can be some hundred base pair long that is gene okay that is a specific sequence which would code for specific protein and RNA we know that everything will start at this particular point DNA has to be transcribed and translated for functioning of the organism so this specific sequence which can be some hundreds of base pair long in the other way we will say segment or chunk of DNA that codes for specific protein and RNA is called gene thousands of gene throughout the DNA don't look at this term as of now again otherwise you'll get confused so we'll have about in humans about 20,000 genes are there in our DNA the whole of DNA complete DNA so now we might have heard about you know the traits or specific characteristics that we get from our parents you know that is because of the genes that is because these genes gets passed on from one generation to other so, so genes are nothing but specific chunk or specific sequence of nucleotides that codes for protein and RNA and these genes are generally few hundreds of base pair long here I have shown only few but in reality it is actually some hundreds base pair long and one example that I have given here is cystic fibrosis gene is present on chromosome 7 that means every gene has a specific site in our DNA you know where it is located is very specific and it will be the same throughout the population okay now from gene let's move on and take a bigger picture alright so we just saw that we have really huge DNA 2 meters of DNA to fit inside the uh, nucleus so for that if you try to you know put this DNA as it is in such a tiny nucleus it's not going to happen so nature has a beautiful mechanism of packaging of this DNA into nucleus and we have talked about that mechanism we are not going in detail but just briefly if you look at here DNA we know is double helix now we know that and G's means specific nucleotide sequence that is present in DNA now this thread okay DNA is like a thread will start wrapping itself around the histone proteins 
all right now when it does so you know what happens it results in reduction of its size as in the space that it might require to fit in would reduce okay so it starts undergoing condensation process by wrapping itself around the histone protein and that results in formation of nucleosome structure as i said i'll put the link uh, on the screen for this mechanism condensation and formation of chromosome in detail you can have a look there it will further undergo coiling there will be arrangement of these nucleosome so it's like histones are there everywhere with dna wrapped around it so as we can see here the nucleosomes are getting arranged is getting more and more condensed resulting in this particular structure over here which we called chromosome all right we are familiar with this structure this is nothing but super condensed form of dna where it is wrapped around histone proteins all right now in humans we have how many chromosomes we have 46 chromosomes because we are diploid organism what happens is we have one set of chromosome that comes from mother and one set of chromosome comes from father so that means we have 23 pairs of chromosome now out of this 23 pairs we'll have 22 of autosomal chromosomes and one pair of sex chromosome which can be either xx or xy right now i told you just spin this 2 meters point over here now let's take that 2 meters of dna point and try to see here we say it's about 2 meters long the dna is about 2 meters long when i say the dna is about 2 meters long in one nucleus what i mean is when we take all of these chromosome all the 46 chromosome and, and unwind the dna and put them all in one long strand the whole length of those 46 chromosome in one cell is about 2 meters long all right that's what it means now this is one point where there can be confusion okay when you say dna is about 2 meters long we are talking about the complete dna that is all of the 46 chromosomes together make up the 2 meters dna and that has to fit inside our nucleus when it comes to gametes they are going to be haploid right so they will have only 22 of autosomal chromosome not pairs only 22 of autosomal chromosomes and one of the sex chromosome either x or y so this we are talking about somatic cell a diploid cell 46 chromosome 2 meters of dna keep this point very clear in your mind all right so now we are done with dna gene and chromosome right so what is this genome then all right so it's easy to understand a genome is nothing but an organism's complete set of dna okay what is this complete set of dna that means uh, we are talking about humans so we have all the chromosomes present all the dna that is present in nucleus other than that we also have dna present in mitochondria for us right say so for example in plants if we are talking about we'll also take in consideration chloroplast so for human the complete set of dna that means you need to consider all the dna that is present in nucleus that together makes up the genome of an organism it's nothing but you are taking in consideration all the genetic information that is present inside a cell of organism and inside a cell of organism for humans we have nuclear dna and we have mitochondrial dna so when you put all of that together it becomes the genome of an individual now to make this very simple to understand and just put it in one flow let's look at it this way in one cell if we take we have a lot of genome right a lot of information is there for one cell okay now imagine this information is is nothing but it's in form of nucleotides right there are specific codes specific sequence of nucleotides that is going to tell the cell how to grow how to survive how to develop and so on so there is a lot of information in form of genome now imagine if this genome you know let's let's uh, imagine this as a huge textbook that you are studying so it's a huge huge 
amount of data containing one book if you don't have chapters in the book what is going to happen it's just a lot of information written all together that is going to be little difficult for you to go through it or to access it whenever you want so what nature did is this genome which has a lot of information nature divided that into pieces of chromosome in 23 pairs of chromosome right so that becomes easy now this whole lot of genome which has a lot of information is divided into 23 chapters say for example in books now each chapter is going to have different information in it so you can access it whenever you want based on what is your need particular chapter you can go through similarly all the genes that are present in the genome are divided now among these chromosomes so it becomes very easy for cell there is a specific site for each chromosome as i said say for example over here cystic fibrosis gene is present on chromosome number 7 a specific site will be there specific locus will be there so genome is divided amongst these chromosome right again when you take chromosome into consideration you will have specific chunks or segments which are coding for specific proteins that are nothing but genes and the basic unit of all this is your dna that's all this is very easy to understand right you can go either way from dna you can go to genome or genome to dna so that's all that is what is dna gene chromosome and genome so that's all for now i hope this video was helpful do subscribe to the channel for new video every week and i'll see you next time until then keep learning